Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. In the last few months or so, SSDs started dropping in price really fast, so fast that you can get a 1TB drive for around $100 and 2TB ones for $200, so basically that's around 10 cents per gigabyte of storage, which is now becoming really compelling in terms of getting that large storage option in combination with what SSDs bring in performance-wise. Although, yes, at this point they are still around 2 to 4 times more expensive per gigabyte than a normal mechanical drive, but I gotta admit that it's getting harder to resist buying a large capacity SSD for storage and not just as a main system drive. Feel free to tell me your opinion about this, do you have any large capacity SSDs for your extra storage needs? Be sure to leave a comment down below. One example of those large capacity models is this Toshiba's TR200 model which found its way to me. It's not a brand new model to say at least, it's been on the market for a while now, around the start of the last year. This in particular is the 960GB model, which is actually the largest available capacity for this lineup, while below that you can get your regular sized ones, the 240 and 480 gigabyte sizes. Beside your regular benchmarking, I've also decided to make an external drive out of this model, see how it copes with transferring larger data and mimicking your regular example of an external mass storage drive. As for the technical side of things, it carries Toshiba's NAND flash memory, this one in particular being the 64 layer by CS3 3D TLC one, while for the controller we have the Fizen S11, compared to its predecessor substantially smaller and cheaper 40 nanometer controller, which unfortunately because of its dual channel layout cannot be configured in capacities larger than this 960 gigabyte one. Most importantly the TR200 doesn't carry any DRAM, which makes it a rare find as there aren't many DRAMless SSDs, so in theory it's cheaper to produce, but the lack of it also reflects onto its performance. In particular, although the sequential read speed performance is more than okay, hanging above the 500 megabytes per second figure, the write speed performance is way down, especially when it comes to incompressible data. The lack of DRAM buffer also doesn't help in the area of random write performance and anything latency related, while IOPS numbers are a bit lower compared to its main rivals out there, but nothing that will make a difference in its everyday performance. When it comes to real life testing, the loading times in each case weren't any different compared to its faster brother, Toshiba's RC100 NVMe SSD, everything was as expected when it comes to SSD-based user experience. As for using it as an external drive SSD storage solution, the TR200 is a great candidate since it doesn't utilize the DRAM buffer, so it's less prone to brick, while that also goes great with the fact that in one of the latest Windows 10 updates, there was a change in the default settings of the removal policy, where you can now, due to Windows not using the drive's caching function by default, safely eject the drive without actually using that safely remove hardware option in Windows tray, but rather you can just freely yank out the drive out of its USB port. When it comes to performance in this particular purpose, moving a large 20GB file onto it resulted in a stable speed of around 350MB per second as shown here, and that was with a compressible type of file, while with handling an incompressible file type, that speed promptly tapered off below 100MB per second after just few moments, which is far from impressive, but somewhat expected. Putting its performance on the side, the main problem with the TR200 model in my opinion lays in its currently a bit weird pricing situation. On the US market you can basically find this model just below its original MSRP figure, that's back when it was just launched, around $280, which is way off for this type of drive, by any stretch of the imagination, performance and capacity wise, and which is pushing away its potential buyers for sure. But the thing is that this is actually an anomaly, because on the European market we have a totally different story, here you can buy this drive for about 130 euros, which is around $145. This is probably due to the fact that Toshiba Memory America closed down their retail SSD branch in the US, so as a consequence we are seeing some inflated pricing due to stock shortage. 
But even if the price was the same across all markets, the TR200 is still a bit more expensive than its similarly sized rivals. I'm saying this with a reason because the thing is that when it comes to SSDs, we've all come to a stage or let's say a realization where we users sort of apply the very similar buying practice, which is used when choosing your RAM, get as much as you can for the lowest price possible. Rarely anyone goes that extra mile to cash out for a faster RAM kit, because bottom line there's almost no difference at all in terms of your regular end user experience, it's RAM after all, total capacity is pretty much always more important and more beneficial than the speed itself, for example you'd rather buy a 64GB 3200MHz RAM kit than a 16GB 4500MHz RAM kit, and actually those two right now have a very similar price. Basically the same buying philosophy caught on to the SSD segment and now that their main job was fulfilled, that being the multiple increase of random performance and IOPS figures compared to the regular mechanical hard drive, which in the end translated in immensely better user experience, everything else fell into the second plan, even the high sequential read and write speeds don't matter that much to users themselves nor the actual user experience, as I've proved in the SATA SSD versus NVMe SSD video, and of course if you're interested in that feel free to check it out in the right top corner. Although we all already established this a couple of times, the main reason why mechanical hard drives were slow to begin with in terms of booting up windows, loading games and applications is not because of their low read and write rates, but rather because of the inability to handle multiple data at once. Of course there are some particular scenarios where this drive would be useful, no doubt about that, but the problem is that even if you could use the TR200 in that case, if you would really need that kind of performance and to a certain point money was no object to you, there are quite a few other models of SSDs on the market out there which outperform it. Bottom line, Toshiba in my opinion has one way to go from here with this model. In order to get users attention when it comes to buying it and not leaving it up to chance or set of certain circumstances, they need to lower down the price closer to that 10 cents per gigabyte figure. This is especially important for users who just want to make a decently fast external SSD storage solution by just putting it in an enclosure like this one as they are aiming to get as much as storage space for as little as possible. That's it for this time from me, thank you for watching, toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!